Hello students, welcome to an academy, India's largest learning platform. I am Abhishek Datta. I did my graduation from IIT Roorkee and my MBA from IIM Indore. So in the previous video, we had studied about the developments leading to the quantum model, right? So this video is especially about the quantum model and we'll use the developments which we studied in the previous video. So please revise them and let's begin our learning session. Hello students, welcome to an academy once again. This video is about the quantum model of an atom. I am Abhishek Datta. You already know about me. So let's begin this. So there are four topics of discussion. The first one will be the drawbacks of the Bohr's model. Now that we know the couple of developments, we will uh, try to reason out why the Bohr model was not sufficient. Then we'll see what is the difference between classical and quantum mechanics. Thirdly, we'll learn about the most important equation in the quantum mechanics, which is the Schrodinger equation. And finally, we'll learn about the quantum model of an atom. So let's begin with our first topic. Why was the Bohr's model not sufficiently able to explain these two developments which we did in the previous video? So in the Bohr's model, an electron is regarded as a charged particle moving in well-defined circular orbits about the nucleus. This is what Niels Bohr said to us. The wave character of the electron is not considered in the Bohr's model though. We, we said that matter, they uh, show both the properties, which is the particle properties as well as the wave-like properties. Now Bohr's model was not sufficient to answer the question, how did the electrons show the wave character, right? So we needed a different model now. So further in the Bohr's model, an orbit is clearly defined path and this path can be completely defined only if both the position and the velocity of the electron are known exactly at the same time. Right guys? So according to Mr. Bohr, he said that the orbit is a planar 2D or orbit, right? Around It is a circular orbit where the electron is revolving around the nuclei. But we said according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that you cannot find out the trajectory of an electron because for that you will need both the velocity as well as the momentum which is impossible to find out simultaneously. Hence, this is not possible according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So that is why we can say that Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom therefore not only ignores the dual behavior of matter guys but also it contradicts the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So these two properties which we studied in the previous video, they are not being followed in the Bohr's model and that is why Bohr's model is the wrong model. An insight into the structure of the atom was needed which could account for wave-like duality of matter and be consistent with both the Heisenberg principle as well. So a new model was required which accounted for the wave particle duality of matter and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle as well. So this came with the advent of the quantum mechanics. So quantum model of an atom, it accounts for both of these properties, the wave property as well as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle guys. So let us move on to quantum mechanics and learn the difference between the classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. So let us study what classical mechanics is. So classical mechanics is the simple Newtonian mechanics which we have studied in physics, which is the movement of normal objects like humans, trucks, or any normal object like a cricket ball as well, right? So classical mechanics is based on Newton's laws of motion, the three laws of motion, and it successfully describes the motion of all macroscopic objects like trucks, cars, and balls, right? But it cannot explain the movement of microscopic objects like electrons. However, it fails when applied to microscopic objects, guys, like electron atoms and molecules. This is mainly because of the fact that classical mechanics ignores the concept of dual behavior of matter, especially for the subatomic particles and the uncertainty principle. So classical mechanics here, it ignores both of these properties, the dual behavior of matter as well as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Hence, a new type of mechanics has to be developed which is applicable for the microscopic objects as well and which takes into account both of these properties. So quantum mechanics is the branch of science that takes into account both the dual behavior of matter and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle as well and this branch is known by the name quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is a theoretical science that deals with the study of the motion of the microscopic objects for example the electrons atoms and the molecules right and that have both observable wave-like properties and particle-like properties. 
so this is how quantum mechanics was developed there was a need for quantum mechanics and guys when quantum mechanics is applied to macroscopic objects so this is applicable for microscopic objects we said but when the same principles the principles of quantum mechanics are applied to macroscopic objects for example the uh, macroscopic objects which we talked about here which were the uh, truck or a car or a ball say suppose for which wave like properties are insignificant right microscopic objects they do not have wave like properties the results are the same are those as same from the classical mechanics so we can safely say that if you know quantum mechanics you can apply the same properties to macroscopic objects and arrive at the results of classical mechanics hence quantum mechanics is a superset of classical mechanics you just need to know quantum mechanics and definitely you can derive the properties of classical mechanics hence quantum mechanics is so important to us guys let's move on now so we move on to the schrodinger equation this is the one equation from which everything in quantum mechanics is derived from especially the quantum model of an atom so let us uh, know what is the schrodinger equation so for a system such as an atom or a molecule whose energy does not change with time the schrodinger equation can be written as this thing over here so it's a very complicated and mathematically intensive equation you are not supposed to solve that equation just know that this is the uh, way it is denoted this is the schrodinger equation so what is the h over here the capital h is the hamiltonian operator right guys it's a mathematical operator you just need to know this and what is e e is the total energy of the system we said the energy does not change in time and hence e is the total energy which is constant for a system and this sign right it is known by the name psi and psi represents the wave function which is the amplitude of the electron wave so psi represents the wave function every particle every electron will have the particle properties as well as the wave properties and this psi symbol it will define what is the wave function right so when this schrodinger equation is solved for hydrogen atom which is a simple atom right because it has only one electron right and the solution gives us the possible energy levels the electron can occupy and the corresponding wave functions so the solution of this equation over here this equation will give us the uh, e as well as the psi these two are the results if we solve the schrodinger equation so when uh, scientists solve the schrodinger equation for hydrogen atom they arrived at some results this result is the solution which gives possible energy levels of the electron can occupy and the corresponding wave functions right guys of the electron associated with each energy level so out of the possible values only certain solutions are permitted not every solutions were permitted guys only certain solutions were permitted and each permitted solution is highly significant as it corresponds to a definite energy state thus we can say that energy is quantized so that is why not every solution is possible only certain solutions are possible and hence energy is quantized what do i mean by this statement this means that the quantized energy states and corresponding wave functions which are the characteristic by three quantum numbers now this energy which is quantized you can uh, define this you can characterize this energy state using just three numbers three quantum numbers what are the three quantum numbers required they are the principal quantum number n azimuthal quantum number l and the magnetic quantum number m so the, if you have these three numbers with you you can state what is the energy state of an electron right so this is an important way how you can find out what is the energy state an electron is residing in okay guys so let's move on so now that we know about the schrodinger equation and how the energy states are quantized let us summarize what is the quantum model now so quantum model or the quantum mechanical model of an atom is the picture of the structure of an atom which emerges from the application of the schrodinger equation to atoms so if you use the schrodinger equation which is the basic equation of quantum mechanics and apply that to subatomic particles like electrons you will arrive at the quantum model of the atom right guys so what is the first point the first point says the energy of the electron in atoms is quantized as we said it cannot be a quant continuous value it is quantized that is it can have only certain specific values not any random continuous value only discrete uh, possible values of energy are possible the existence of quantized electronic state levels is a direct result of the wave like properties of the electrons and are allowed solutions of schrodinger wave equation 
if you solve the Schrodinger wave equation as we said in the previous slide, you will arrive at certain specific solutions which are the certain specific energy states guys and which is why it is quantized in nature. Thirdly, we see that both the exact position and the exact velocity of an electron in an atom cannot be determined simultaneously. This is what Heisenberg said. This is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Hence, we can only specify the probability of finding the electron at a different points in atom. We cannot say with 100% surety, with 100% certainty that you will find an electron in this region. We can only assign a prob probability distribution to the uh, way we find an electron, right guys? So this was the point number three. So what is point number four guys? An atomic orbital is the wave function. Wave function is denoted by psi of an electron in an atom, right? And all the information about the electron in an atom is stored in its orbital wave function. If you know this orbital wave function psi of an electron, you will find all the information you will ever require of an electron in this wave function. So this wave function is the superset of all information about an electron. And uh, again, this wave function is characterized by three numbers, three quantum numbers, which we said in the previous slide, right? So the probability of finding an electron at a point within an atom so we are talking about the probability of finding an electron. We said that we cannot be 100% certain that an electron is uh, present at some place. We can only assign some probabilities. So this fifth point gives us the probability distribution. The probability of finding an electron at a point within an atom, it is directly proportional to the square of the wave function, which is psi square, right? So if uh, this probability is directly proportional to psi square, this is what point number five says. So guys, let us summarize quickly what all we studied in this video. Firstly, we said about the drawbacks about the Bohr model, right? So Bohr's model was not sufficiently able to describe how uh, the dual nature of matter and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle has to be accounted for. And hence we need, needed a new model now. Secondly, we differentiated between the quantum mechanics as well as classical mechanics. And quantum mechanics is the superset of classical mechanics. If you know quantum mechanics, you'll definitely be able to derive the classical equations, classical mechanics equations. Then we said that the energy of electron are present only in quantized energy states. And this can be characterized using just three quantum numbers, which is the principal quantum number N, azimuthal quantum number L and the magnetic quantum number M. Then we said that the atomic orbital is a function of, is the wave function psi of an electron in an atom. And all the information about the electron you will ever need is stored in its orbital wave function psi. And we also said about the probability of finding an electron in the given space. So that is directly proportional to the square of the orbital wave function or psi square. So this was the summary guys. And I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Thank you for listening to me. In the next session, we'll be delving deeper into the quantum model. We'll learn about what are orbitals and we'll learn in detail what are the three quantum numbers and how to calculate them. Right. So this is the major topic and please pay attention in this video. As always, if you enjoy watching my videos, you can follow me over here and ask me any doubts if you have in the comment section. Thank you guys. Take care. Bye bye.